the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today on In Depth, we're going to look at the famous verse that says, I am the vine, you are the branches. It is found in John chapter 15, verse 5. Let's look at the nature of vine to better understand this. So the plant is actually a, a climbing one. It's one that whatever it sees, just climbs upon it. So it's always going higher. It's always growing. The growth is based on the stem itself. It's not of the branch, it's of the stem. And they always need to grow higher to reach sunlight. And we know that in our life, God is the true light. And He wants to take us, the branches, at a higher level. And just to keep going higher and to aim for heaven. They're able to colonize a large area without climbing. So if there isn't an, an object for them to climb on, they can actually fill this table in very little time. That's the nature of the plant. And very, very cool thing. Let's say if this Bible here is the only area that is, has fertile soil and the rest are rocks, they can grow out of this area here in particular and spread all over the rocks. And this is our nature with Him. He takes us and He plants us in Him and then we reach everyone, whether a person has a fertile soil, to receive the word or not. They just keep growing. So this is about vine. Let's look at grape vine in particular. Their growth is optimized around bodies of water, just lakes or rivers around them. And we know that God is the living water. And we, as growing vine, need to be around Him and need to be around that living water for success. As Jesus told the Samaritan woman, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked and he would have given you living water. Also, being around mountain ranges helps. So the water and the mountains help control the climate in the area, as it is very important. We'll, we'll discuss it in a few minutes. It's very important for the growth of the grapevine. And David, the prophet and king, tells us in Psalm 36, your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgment are a great deep, O Lord. You preserve man and beast. Tell us how great that mountain is, he being the strong rock in our lives. So if the climate is too cold, the grape bear no seed, and they're of varying size. And they have no seed, then they can't grow another, another branch, like another part of, of the grape vine. And it tells us at times of trouble, when it's too cold for us, sometimes we lack that part where we gain more virtues. If we're not with Him, of course. If we're not grafted in the true vine. If it's too hot, the grape is not fully developed, but falls to the ground. And that is pride. It falls to the ground. Every time we think we know too much or we're too good for this, we're going to fall. And there's always a flowering process that comes with grapevine and many other plants. The sole purpose of the flower is reproduction. And we know how beautiful that flower is. It looks very, very pretty. However, during that season, when it's flowering, when it looks good, it is most susceptible to hazards. And this is us in our life as well. When we're with God, when we're grafted in Him, at the time where we start to look good in His sight, when we start to be ready to produce more fruit in us, that we're attacked by the devil. Let's go to the scripture. John 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Now, this explanation starts different than any other. Usually, Jesus tells uh, a parable, an analogy, and then he explains it. But here he starts off by saying, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. He starts by introducing what we're going to be discussing and who the father is. Going to verse 2. Every branch in me does, that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Jesus here gets right down to it. He's like, look, there is no variation in judgment. No fruit means you're going to be cast away. But he says something very interesting. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Pruning is actually cutting down. 
So if there's a branch and it has these different stems and it has fruit on it, the vine dresser cuts the, some of these so that they bear more fruit, which sounds very weird. But what happens is, with the plant itself, if you have a lot of stems, then the nourish nourishment is distributed evenly among them. But if one virtue, or I'm going to say one fruit, is growing better than the other, it's better to cut that badly growing one so we can focus on this virtue. And we, if we look at contemporary saints, let, let's look at Pope Carolus the Sixth. He is known to be the man of prayer. That doesn't mean that he didn't have any other virtue, but that was his focus. He focused on praying all the time. And through that, he acquired many other virtues. If we um, look at Enba Ibrahim from Egypt, he is known to give to the poor always. It doesn't mean that he didn't pray or that he didn't have any other virtues, but he focused on that. And that's what God does. When he sees a really good virtue growing, he sort of cuts down, he prunes us so that we focus on this one and excel in it. And through that particular virtue, we get many others. Going to verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. It makes perfect sense. Why did Jesus mention this here? It makes perfect sense that unless the branch is connected to the vine, it won't bear fruit. But he's saying it also for us to learn that whatever fruit we do produce, if we're not with him, then it's evil. And it tells us in the Epistle of St. James in chapter 1, Do not be deceived, my brethren, for every good fruit and every perfect gift is from God, and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So if I'm not with him, whatever it is that I have, that I bear with me, is not the true fruit that God wants me to bear. It's also true with wisdom. We know that true wisdom comes from God and nobody else. Again, but this is chapter 3 from the Epistle of St. James. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace, by those who make peace. And if you notice, he's also talking about fruits. Going to verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Although he's ready, when I'm grafted in him, to prune, yet I know that, that I will bear much fruit. Much, much fruit. Because after I focus on one and I master it, then I can focus on another one and go, and just keep going, and being in Him, I'll be rich, and keep growing higher and higher. But sometimes with the pruning, as we know, sometimes for me to get from point A to, to point B, it's not a direct line. With God, it's different. If you look with me in the Old Testament, when God led the people out of the land of Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea. They could have easily went to the land that God promised them on, on foot. They could have went through the desert of Sinai and just crossed over. But God always has a different plan. He has a different route. And through that route, He will glorify His name to us and to the rest of the world. We just need to trust Him. Now, again, going back to the reading from John 15. Jesus concludes by saying, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. And this is the true vine. Love. It just keeps increasing. It doesn't decrease. It is good. The wisdom that comes with it is peaceable and gentle. It comforts everyone around us. It comforts us first, that we may spread 
that peace and comfort to others. Love is the universal language. Others say music is, but the deaf can't hear music. The mute can't sing it. And infants don't understand it, but everyone understands love. I pray that we all abide in his love and keep growing higher and higher. Thank you for listening. I'm Andy. I'll see you next time.